So I've done videos on a bunch of terminal file managers, NNN, VIFM, Ranger, FFM, even really weird ones like DMenuFM, which uses DMenu as the base for a file manager. I don't know why anyone would ever do that, but it was a really cool idea. The only big one that I haven't tried is Midnight Commander. I still need to try that out, but out of the ones that I have tried, there's one that always sticks out to me. Now, my original terminal file manager was Ranger, but once I switched from Ranger to LF, Every single time I try out something different, I always come back to LF, and today I thought I should explain why that actually is the case, because I know some people love VIFM, it's a great application, Ranger's a great application, NNN's a great application, I'm not saying anything bad about those, but I have my reasons for liking LF. One of the things that I love about LF is when you first install it, it's basically a glorified LS. So this is pretty much how it looks. The only difference really is that there's no icons out of the box and the previews are a little bit different, but the rest of it aesthetically is the same. But when it comes to doing functionality, so in a lot of other terminal file managers like Ranger, you can do things like unzip files, chmod files, make files, make folders, all of that stuff out of the box. You don't have to go and implement it yourself. But that also means you have to go and work with it the way that it's implemented in that file manager. Now, in LF's case, it doesn't come with any of that. You can't even make a file or a folder. That's what I mean by it's a glorified LS. You can go and look at your file system, and that's about it. And this does turn some people away, but this was exactly what I wanted from a file manager. Now, when you use any application that has a bunch of built-in functionality, it sort of assumes a specific working style. So when you use NNN, it assumes you're gonna be working with tabs and using it the way that NNN is sort of designed to be worked with. If you're not using it like that, you're gonna have kind of a hard time actually enjoying it. If you use something like VIFM, it's designed to be the file manager extension of Vim, and it feels a lot like Vim, and if you don't want to use it like Vim, it's not going to be the best experience to work with. And LF, on the other hand, it looks like Ranger, which I feel like is the best feature of Ranger, but I can make it work exactly the way that I want. Even though I can go and reconfigure these other applications, doing so is going to take a lot of effort, and I feel like building it up from the ground up might be a bit easier. Now, when it comes to actually writing the functionality for LF, it's mainly going to be done inside of shell script, but you're not actually forced to do it with shell script. So if you're going to do anything inside of the config file, basically this is going to be in whatever syntax your default shell is going to be. I know that it doesn't play super nicely with fish, but you can get it working with that. For any other shell though, like bash and zsh, you're probably going to be just fine. So you can define everything in shell script, or you can go and define it in a separate file that's written in Python or Perl or even C or C++ if you really want to. Now, this is very much a personal preference thing, but when I want to do anything with my terminal, I typically prefer to do it in the shell script language of my terminal rather than interacting with my system with, you know, the OS library inside of Python or anything like that. I know some people do like to use those, but for me, I feel like it makes the most sense that if I'm doing something in a terminal application, that it should be configured with the language I'm using in my terminal. A nice thing about LF is that it integrates really nicely into your shell. So if you don't go and set overwrites for things like your opener, editor, pager, shell, things like that, it's going to rely on your environment variables. Now, the nice thing about this is if you don't set them, you have something there, but in the case of, say, my opener, I use XDG open with my GUI applications as well. So I should go and fix up my overwrites in here because there's some cases where I want to open up the terminal application rather than my GUI application like I would if I was opening it up from something like, say, PCMan FM, just so I can keep working in the terminal. But in most cases, relying on the fallback is going to be fine on my system. Now back to scripting for just a moment. So because I'm relying on regular shell script to do everything, I'm not really relying on any applications that are, I guess, bound to working only inside of an LF context. So things like, say, making a new directory, I'm running printf to say, hey, I need a directory name, then I'm getting some user input, and I'm making a directory with the answer. I know I should have some, like, error checking in there, but that doesn't really matter for now. None of this in here, with the exception of LF-remote and then reloading the server, actually relies on LF. And this part isn't actually required. I could get rid of this and work basically the same way. I'll just have to refresh the screen manually. That's pretty much all that's actually doing. 
But if I was using something where the functionality was actually inside of the terminal file manager, so if it was something like LF make file, LF make directory, things like that, then when I actually switch to a different application, I would have to go and rewrite all of that rather than just keeping the exact same functionality. But also, I could have this working exactly the way that I want it to work. So I don't just have to have, hey, printf file name. What I could do is I could show the current working directory. I could show the files that already exist in that folder for, say, something like chmod. I could show all of the different valid ways you can run chmod. But in my case, I'm just having the absolute bare minimum approach. But if you want to put in that extra effort, you absolutely can. Now, obviously, Ranger is considerably more popular than LF is, even though people have been talking about it a bit more. If people want a terminal file manager, it's probably going to be NNN, Midnight Commander, Ranger, or VIFM. Those are probably the big choices anyone actually goes with. But because LF is so similar to the way that Ranger looks, and really in the way that Ranger functions from a API perspective, at least for external applications, any applications that integrate into Ranger can probably be integrated into LF as well. So things like, say, AutoJump and ZLua, both those have functions to actually work inside of Ranger, but getting those working inside of LF isn't really that difficult because you do have that API to call the server. You can generally convert the calls from Ranger calls to LF calls and have it pretty much be doing the exact same thing, which I think is really cool. So LF users can kind of leech off the third-party functionality added to Ranger and still get it over here as well. So most terminal file managers are perfectly fast, but in my VIFM video, I talked about this problem that VIFM has where it is really, really slow with my preview script. And I hadn't had a problem inside of Ranger or basically any other terminal file manager except VIFM. So the problem VIFM has is that I think it does preview single threaded. So if you're scrolling and a preview can't be loaded straight away, it's going to pause the application. Whereas inside of LF and basically any sensibly written terminal file manager, it's going to go and load that in the background. So you can keep using the application without having to see the preview straight away. And this isn't even with using image previews. This is just a text preview with a lot of text being printed out. Now, could I make my image and video previews lighter? Absolutely, I could. I don't need to be using Media Info. I could be using any other sort of application, or I could just be using Media Info but not showing all of the information at once. But in the case of LF, I don't really have to make that choice. If I want to run it like this, I can run it like this, and it's not really going to be a performance problem. I can just keep going through the application, and it can be loaded in the background, and then when I come back to it, the preview will actually be loaded rather than completely locking up the application and making it impossible to use. Now, I briefly mentioned the Ranger look before, but what I mean is this three-pane style. So, on the left-hand side, you have the parent directory. On the middle, you have the directory that you're currently in. This is the one that you can actually go and scroll through and select files in. And then on the right-hand side, you have a file preview on the case of showing a file. Or if you're hovering over a folder instead, you're going to see a folder preview instead. Now... The nice thing is that it actually does show you which file you last selected inside of that folder, but that part isn't actually required. And then obviously when you move up a directory, the parent directory now becomes the current directory, and then in the left-hand side you're looking at the parent of the previous parent. Now when it comes to some of the other stuff I showed, I can explain why it's functionally better, but in the case of the way that it looks, this is completely based on my aesthetics. So. I think the reason for this is when I first started using terminal file managers, I was using Ranger. I used that probably for two or three months. Someone can probably work it out if they go watch my older videos. But I used Ranger for quite a while. And then when I switched from Ranger, I switched to LF. And then I used that for probably eight months before I tried anything else, maybe seven months. So I was using LF for a really long time. And at this point, I've probably been using it for about a year and a half or so. So I'm really, really used to this three pane style and anything else kind of feels weird. Now, I can get used to a two pane style. That's fine because in a two pane style, you still have a preview window. But when it's just a single pane and you have no previews, that always feels like a big downgrade to me. And if a single pane layout does have a preview, what it's usually going to be is either open up an external application to do it or have like a pop-up window that covers the files you're actually seeing. So that feels like a downgrade to me. Now, if you don't care about previews whatsoever, you probably don't need to worry about it. But I'm so used to having them so I can actually check what's in a file before I open it that it feels weird not having them. 
One of the big things that both VIFM and Ranger do that LF doesn't do is have image previews. Now, there are hacky ways to get image previews working in LF, but they're very much that. They're very hacky, and they don't really play that nicely. Some people have got them working better than others, but they're still ultimately a hack. Inside of Ranger, though, if you have an image preview, it works basically as an image preview would work. So... I don't actually care about this functionality. When I left Ranger, I was like, oh, it's kind of bad that I'm losing this. I guess I'm going to miss it. After about a week or so, I didn't miss it anymore, and it made my terminal file manager way quicker. Because the problem with image previews in a terminal is most terminals are not designed to be able to show images. So it's going to be a massive performance hit to actually include them. Now, I know that some of them do it better, like Kitty does have a built-in way to do image previews, but if you're relying on something like UberZug or W3M, it's going to be pretty slow. Now, when it comes to some of the killer functionality that things like, say, VIFM have with, say, bulk renaming or being able to undo your changes, there's no reason why these are only possible inside of VIFM. Bulk renaming is actually available in a couple of terminal file managers, but for some reason, people talk about it with VIFM a lot. I'm not really sure why, but undoing changes actually is a big one. This one you're going to have to go and write yourself, but because you can just go and write everything in shell script anyway, it wouldn't really be that difficult to actually do. So the point of this video wasn't to say that all of the other terminal file managers are terrible. They're all great in their own way, and I actually mean all of them are great. Even things like Dmenu FM and FFF, if you get used to the way they actually work, they actually are pretty decent applications. Dmenu FM does still need a bit of work, but FFF is basically... NNN stripped down to its absolute core. So if that's all you need from a file manager, it's a great application to try. I don't think I'm going to convince anyone to switch to LF, but if you're just looking for a new terminal file manager, honestly, I would really recommend giving it a shot. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andre, Nathan, Montezar, Will, Chico Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Road, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters or $2 patrons. If you want to go on small with them, links down below to my LibrePay, Subscribestar, Patreon, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, BitChute, and Library, if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.